Hello, my name is Sierra and welcome to my channel, Homemade Mathematics. Today we're going to be taking a look at what diamond problems are and how we solve them. Then we'll look at a few examples and then we're going to end with showing how these diamond problems can help you factor trinomials. So to start, let's take a look at what diamond problems are. What a diamond problem is, is they'll give you two out of the four of these things. These two are just the numbers. The top is those numbers multiplied together. The bottom is those numbers being added. So usually how these worksheets start is they'll start by giving you A and B. Pretty easy. Multiply them, add them to get our other two. They gave us A and B, three times five. What we multiply is gonna go on top. Three plus five, what we add, or their sum is gonna go on bottom. However, it starts getting a little more challenging. Instead of giving you A and B, they're gonna give you either the multiplying or the adding, and then either A or B. They're not gonna give you both. So like we have here. This time, we know they're gonna multiply to get us negative 32, and we know that A is four. So four times what? would get us negative 32. Negative eight. Now that we know the other number is negative eight, we can go ahead and find the last number. Four plus a negative eight, negative four. Okay, and again, this next one, they give us B, but they do not give us A. So we're gonna have to find that by using the knowledge that we know they're gonna add to be negative two. So six plus what gets me negative two? Then negative eight times six, we're gonna get our last one of negative 48. Once you've practiced a few like that, they're gonna to go to the more challenging ones where they give you the multiplication and the addition and you have to come up with what two numbers fit that criteria. So these next three are like I just said, where you're given them what they multiply to be and what they add to be and you have to find the two numbers. So the best strategy I think for this is to start by listing the factors of the number that you know is being multiplied. So what are my options to get me 24? All right, well, we know anything times one, all right, two times 12, three times eight, four times six, and I think that's all of them. All right, now, remember it's negative. Whenever we multiply to get a negative, that means one's positive and one's negative. So looking at these, how could I make one positive and one negative so that it equals a positive five? Okay, I could use a positive eight and a negative three. Right? Eight times negative three would get me negative 24. Eight plus a negative three would get me five. So you know if that negative's up on top, one has to be positive, one has to be negative. So you just have to figure out, okay, how could I subtract these to get that bottom number? If it's positive, you know they're either gonna be both positive or both negative. So my second example, you can see when I multiply, I get a positive 16. So I'm gonna go ahead and list the multiples. One and 16, two and eight, four and four. This time we want it to add to be negative 17, all right? But it's equaling or it's multiplying to get us a positive. So if it's multiplying to get us a positive and adding to get us a negative, we know those two numbers both have to be negative. So if I put a negative on all of these, which one would add up to get me negative 17? negative 1 and negative 16, right? A negative times a negative gets me a positive 16, a negative 1 plus a negative 16 gives me a negative 17. And then my last one here, I am multiplying to get a negative, so we know one's positive, one's negative. Go ahead and pause, list out the multiples, and see if you can come up with the two numbers. Okay, so I have my multiples up there. Now, I know one's gonna be positive, one's gonna be negative, and I know since this is positive, I know my bigger number is gonna be positive, my smaller number is gonna be negative. All right, 
So if I did this, 60 minus 1, that's not going to get me 11. 30 minus 2, that's not going to get me 11. 20 minus 3, nope. 15 minus 4, that does get me 11. So I know 15 times a negative 4 would get me a negative 60. 15 plus a negative 4 would get me 11. So yes, these are fun problems to practice, but they're also a great way to practice factoring trinomials, which a lot of people struggle with. I want you to go ahead and down in the description box, find one of those worksheets to do, practice your diamond problems, and then come back and I'm going to show you how you can use that to factor. I chose these next three problems to really show you how connected factoring trinomials is to these diamond problems. If you can master diamond problems, you can master factoring trinomials. Right, so with a trinomial, how we do this is we try to split it into two things where it's either x plus or minus something times x plus or minus something else. So we're trying to get it back into um, the original form where you might have been using this form before in distributing, now we're going backwards. And to do that, we want to find two numbers that add to get us this, multiply to get us this, which we just did up above in our diamond problem. That's exactly what you're doing in diamond problems. So we are just going to use x minus 3, x plus 8 you have now factored your trinomial, right? A lot of times you're going to want to check your answer. So if you were to, again, go backwards and see if you got this answer and we were to distribute, right? X times X is X squared. X times eight is eight X. Negative three times X is negative three X. Negative three times eight is negative 24. If I combine my like terms, I get x squared plus 5x minus 24. We got our original, so we know we factored it correctly. This would be your factored answer, um, which the reason why we do that is to be able to solve trinomials. So then where you would go from there to solve it is you would set each of those equal to zero or equal to whatever your expression was equal to. All right, so if that was equal to zero, then you would just say x minus three equals zero, add three to both sides, x equals three is one answer, and then x plus eight equals zero. If we were to subtract eight, we would get x equals negative eight as my second answer. All right, the second one here, same thing. We want two numbers that add to get us negative 17 and multiply to get us 16, which we already decided was x minus 1, x minus 16. Again, you could distribute out. x times x is x squared. x times negative 16 is negative 16x. Negative 1 times x is negative 1x. Negative 1 times negative 16 is plus 16. Combine my like terms. We ended up with the same thing. So our factored version would be x minus 1 times x minus 16. And again, if this was your expression and it was equal to 0 and you were being asked to solve, you would then just say x minus 1 equals 0. So x equals a positive 1, x minus 16 equals 0, you add 16 to both sides, x equals positive 16. That would be my solution. Okay, and the last one, you should be able to figure out pretty quickly because as you can see, diamond problems are what you're doing when you're factoring trinomials. This one, we wanted two numbers that add to get 11, multiply to get us negative 60, which we found was 15 and 4. So our answer for this one is going to be x plus 15, x minus 4. If you want to check that one, go ahead. But as you can see, it should work out to get us the original. So if you're a teacher starting to introduce factoring or having students that are really struggling with factoring, diamond problems are a great place to start. Practice those, get those down. If you have those down, factoring is easy. 
or maybe you are a student and you are really struggling with factoring. Again, I have those worksheets in the description box below. Practice these diamond problems. If you can do diamond problems, you can factor. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what you would like to see next and please subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Mm -hmm.